The fixture you see on the workbench used to be the shop light that lit up the workbench. I got it several years ago from the scrapyard, and it worked okay, but never very well, especially when it was cold. It uses what appears to be a very simple single series inductor choke with some sort of electronic starter gear, such that it behaves somewhere between a preheat and an instant start, like so. As you can see, one bulb fired up, but the one closest to the camera struggled a bit, and though the camera isn't picking up now, it appears to be rectifying the tube, in that I can see visible flicker in the tube, and it'll occasionally splutter. This is one of the simplest and cheapest fluorescent fixtures I've ever seen. It consists of a mains lead going into one side, Inside this enclosure, one on each end, there is an inductor and a small circuit board along with the two sockets. These are connected with three wires running down the length of the fixture. And here's the other one with its own inductor. I'll be popping these apart in just a moment. The control gear in this fixture is very simple, consisting of a small iron cord inductor that apparently runs hot enough to discolor the plastic. It appears to have three taps, but one of those is just a common point and a connection for a small thermal cutout fuse type thing embedded in the windings. Second major component is this unmarked foil capacitor with a 750k ohm resistor across it for discharging. The third main component is this tiny circuit board that serves as an electronic igniter for the lamps. It has one diode, two resistors, one green capacitor, one blue component that I'll need to take a closer look at, and a transistor. From how the fixture starts up, it appears that when power is not applied, the transistor quickly interrupts current and lets it flow again in the inductor, causing high voltage pulses enough to strike the lamps. Once the lamp is lit, the transistor turns off and allows the full line voltage to drive the lamp. Because of the sputtering, flickering, rectifying tube, the fixture's general reluctance to start, even in reasonably warm ambient temperatures, and the lack of visibly damaged parts to aid in troubleshooting, I have decided to gut the fixture, leaving just the sockets and some of the wires, and replace it with one of the two lamp magnetic ballasts I retrieved from the scrapyard. I chose the ballast that originally ran the innermost two lamps in the original fixture. This was the first one I tested in the previous video, and I came to this decision simply because its circuit has a broken socket that I would not really trust to hold a tube up in the air without dropping it. I've mounted the ballast on top of the fixture because it's too wide to fit between the lamps down below. Drilled two holes to bolt it down and two larger holes to allow the wires through. Here you see the bolts holding it down along with on this side, a pair of green wires going to one tube end, a pair of red wires going to the other tube's end. This got a black and brown, though the brown's supposed to be white here, going to the mains. And a pair of browns, which actually should be yellow, going to the other pair of tube ends. Wired the sockets on both sides. Green, green, red, red, and the two yellow browns in parallel on this side. Even with the increased number of wires, they all fit in the original channel running down between the tubes and are hidden from view. Fixture is now fully assembled. Had to use tape to hold the ends on because the original plastic clips were only meant to go together once at the factory and never come apart again. So, in the process of disassembling it, most of them broke. But the tape does a good job, the ends aren't going anywhere, and it holds the tubes well. And now for a test. Fires right up. No sputtering, no nonsense.